Hello everybody, welcome back to another light novel review. This week, I know I had said that I would be reviewing volume number four of Do Ra Ra Ra, but the mail came earlier than I expected and I got my August light novels and there was a brand new volume number one, this one, so I decided that I'd sort of jump ahead my schedule and go ahead and review this. It is volume number one of The Asterisk War and this one by Yu Miyazaki. Now this series is one in the genre of what they call school battles. Basically there is a man-made island, it is called Rika Island, and it is referred to more commonly as Asterisk. There are six schools on this man-made island, each of them supported by a mega corporation. Now this is set in the future, or an alternate Earth if you will where a massive meteorite shower basically devastated much of the planet, destroying a lot of governments and everything else. And it was really corporations that then rose up and sort of pieced the world back together again. And so these mega corporations hold a great deal of power. But also as a result of this meteor shower, we have human beings who are being born with extraordinary abilities that, I mean, to really summarize it would be akin to, say, magic or you know, extremely super empowered in terms of their physical prowess, being able to jump faster, run faster, stronger, so forth. On this island of Asterisk, these six schools are dedicated to educating and training individuals who have been born with these abilities. The main reason for this is for individuals to train themselves to the point where they can take part in a big festival called the Festa, which basically pits students against one another, not even just from school to school, but even, I think, school against themselves, like against their own schoolmates. And it's basically to crown a top victor, and that person is promised money, you know, power, and so forth. So a lot of students, for a variety of reasons, who have these abilities, flock to asterisks in order to try and get into this festival and to try and win. Now our main character, Ayato Amagiri, he comes to the island under sort of an odd circumstance. He is a scholarship student, though we're not exactly sure why, which is one of the mysteries they leave kind of dangling with the whole book. He comes to the island and pretty much within the first five pages sees the main female character in her underwear and she tries to kill him. And then they duel, and the book kind of goes from there. And it's mainly about, you know, it, it's really about Ayato trying to sort of get his head wrapped around how Asterisk works because it is such a different sort of situation. Laws are more lax in regards to certain students. The higher your abilities and the higher you're ranked, the more preferential treatment you get away with. And... So this is really, this first volume is very much an introduction to this world and to how things are sort of operated on this island of Asterisk. Now, if you're going to take away probably one of the biggest faults of this book, it is that as you read it, depending on how many light novels you read, manga you've read, or anime that you've seen, you're going to be like, okay, well, this is like this show, this show, and this show had a baby. You will be able to pick out certain books or stories that you just immediately recognize almost all the elements that were stolen and put into this series. Immediately, the first ones that came to my mind were um, A Certain Magical Index, The Irregular at Magic High School, and Infinite Stratos, which we haven't gotten the light novels or I think even the manga for here, but certainly we got the anime. Now, it takes like I would say it takes the more harem type elements from Infinite Stratos. It takes the sort of island dedicated to educating super powered kids from Index. And then it has the sort of school competition type idea that we get with the Irregular at Magic High School. That's where sort of the three I put together right away. Now, if you can get over the fact that this book seems like a bit of a Frankenstein of a whole bunch of different types of anime, it's really not that bad. In fact, I'd have to say as a reading experience, it was more of fun to read this one than, say, volume one of The Irregular at Magic High School. 
It was the use of language was a little easier. The fact that the magic system is a little bit simpler. It's less like the author has to constantly stop and fill a bunch of gobbledygook just so you can understand what's happening in the middle of a battle. So the battle paces are a lot better. This one is like a purely guilty pleasure type book. If you're looking for something very original, this is certainly not going to be a series that blows you away. There are a couple of elements that I liked. And again, I wouldn't even say that they're unique. Um, Ayato has sort of a bit of a family issue that is interesting. Um, like I said, again, I wouldn't say it's 100% unique to this, but it did kind of make me interested and curious about who he is. The characters, they are... Like, I would say that the female characters have a little bit more personality than the worst of the harem-type storylines, but they still fit pretty neatly into their Sundari category and, you know, long lost friend that I haven't seen in ages category and so on. And enigmatic school, you know, council president. And yeah, it, like I said, it really is a mishmash of a whole bunch of storylines, but it's mishmashed in a fairly good package that if you're willing to let that go and you just want to read something that's kind of fun, I'd say this is not a bad bet. Now again, maybe that criticism sounds a little bit harsh. I mean, this is only volume number one. It's just getting the ball rolling. There were certain elements in this story that I thought were leading to potentially some good things. For instance, I liked the fact that in a on Asterisk, it is about individual achievement. And so even the people who are in your own class, in your own school, there's this idea that they are still your competition, that despite you may be thinking that they are your friends, you are still potentially going to meet them on a battlefield and have to defeat them if you want to accomplish your goals. So I thought that was a slightly good idea, and I thought if that's developed more and the sort of cutthroatness between the schools and subterfuge and underhandedness that the schools use to sort of undermine each other because each is sort of funded by a competing company. Like, I thought those were good ideas. I thought that they were setting up that there could be some interesting things down the line. I was also interested with Ayato. Now, he is a serviceable character. I would not say he is an incredibly unique main character. Again, he is very much like a Kirito he actually is almost exactly a Kirito clone, I would say. He's he's very close to being Kirito. So I guess Sword Art Online, I might as well throw in there as an influence as well. But he's he's got that really good-naturedness to him that makes him likable enough. But at the same time, he's got that slightly stone-cold edge that I'm about to kick your ass kind of thing. That, again, yeah, like, like Kirito. Yeah, that's Kirito. Anyway... But I mean, the one thing that, at least with him, there was sort of a, an interesting bit of a, fi a family dynamic that they allude to, and that sort of seems to be a bit of a driving factor for him. And again, I thought that was at least a little bit interesting. Um, the story, it actually has a story. Like some of these books, like Infinite Stratus as an anime, if you've ever seen it, there's often times that I kind of scratched my head and went, what am I even watching? Like, it seems like the only reason this thing has a, quote, story is just to have, like, slightly eshy moments where the girls take their clothes off. Like, that That really seemed to be sort of the extent of the, quote-unquote, plot. This one actually does have a plot to it. It actually does have a story that explores those ideas of, you know, competition and being driven to succeed and... So I, I can see where this one potentially has the chance to be a good series down the road. Certainly, like I said, this one, first volume, enjoyable enough that I will give it another shot. But if you're looking for something super unique or that's really challenging for you as a reader, you're going to have to look elsewhere. So those are my thoughts on volume number one of The Asterisk War. Now, I mean at this time, next week, I will in fact be reviewing volume number four of Do Ra Ra Ra. I will get back to that and get back on track. And uh, I just did my video on all the books that I bought in August. So I've got a ton of books to try and get through in the next couple of weeks. 
most of them continuing series. Uh, I believe Asterix War is the only volume number one that I have new until September. So this will be next week. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so you can check out this review as well as all my future light novel reviews. Of course, I've got links across the top for my old light novel reviews, manga reviews. And uh, when I find time, I don't mind to write books too. I've got links so you can check those out as well. Thank you so much for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.